Hey everyone, so uh, 7.5 is the last section that will be on your test. It's the hardest section, section so I've, I've broken it up into two screencasts, so this will be the first one. The overall point of, chap uh, of section 5 of chapter 7 is to show you that the actual details of cellular respiration and sh to show you how it converts energy uh, in food, that chemical energy stored in food, to energy in ATP uh, into a form of uh, energy in ATP that's usable by by the cell, uh, but that's usable by for all the chemical reactions that are occurring inside your cells. Okay, so we started with this figure in class. Uh, I hope you can appreciate that the the process of cellular respiration is occurring inside the the mitochondrion. Okay, so mitochondria are the organelles for cell respiration. At the beginning of this this class, we talked about the the mitochondrion being the powerhouse of the cell, the energy creator of the cell. The reason that is true is because uh, because it performs cellular respiration and creates ATP. So we're going to make a bunch of ATP. Uh, we went over in class the actual structure of the mitochondrion. We'll practice that again, but it's a double layer, double membrane uh, organelle. It has an outer and an inner membrane. Uh, it has this little space in between those two layers that we call the inner space. Uh, and then inside that inner membrane is this uh, material called the is a space called the matrix okay so keep those structures in mind they'll be important later on uh, mostly just so that we can distinguish the different places that the three parts of cell respiration occurs okay so there's three different stages uh, of cell respiration so cell respiration has three parts or stages okay the first is glycolysis so stage one is glycolysis uh, stage two is the Krebs cycle, okay, and stage three is something that I've been referring to as oxidative phosphorylation. I'm totally fine with you calling it the electron transport chain and ATP synthase action. Uh, that actually describes the, the the process, I guess, a little better. But okay, so those three stages are what we're going to talk about. That's where we're heading. That's the, that's the sort of details that I would expect uh, from you in in these various sections. You can see glycolysis is occurring out here in the cytoplasm. Okay, so for the first stage, glycolysis is occurring out here in the cytoplasm. Then for the second stage, for the Krebs cycle, we actually move inside uh, of the mitochondrion. Okay, and so the second stage, uh, uh, Krebs cycle, is going to occur in the matrix. Okay, so that's the space right here. It's actually occurring past that, uh, that second inner membrane. Stage three, electron transport chain and ATP synthase action. The electron transport chain and ATP synthase are membrane proteins, guys. So you have to remember that uh, this stage needs to occur in a membrane. So you have two choices, really. You have the outer membrane and the inner membrane. But I really need you to, to understand that the electron transport chain, ATP synthase action, stage three is going to be uh, in the inner membrane. Okay, so some location details that I need you to know for the test. Uh, I also need you to know the relationship between reactants and products for each of these, and we'll go over these in more detail as we go into the individual steps, uh, but you're, there's going to be a clear relationship where glycolysis will take in certain reactants into the process. It'll create products that then go to the Krebs cycle. Okay, so they become those products become reactants for the Krebs cycle. The Krebs cycle will create products that are then going to become reactants for uh, stage three for the electron transport chain and ATP synthase, and then this this will uh, make a product, uh, and that product is lots of ATP. Okay, so that's the overview of this process. We're going to get into a little more details now. I've broken this first screencast into glycolysis and Krebs cycle. Uh, we'll see how we do at that, and then, and then, and then the second screencast will be on um, the electron transport chain and ATP synthase. Glycolysis. Okay, uh, a fairly complicated process, but you know we can break it down. It's, it'll get a lot easier. Uh, I want you to, to focus on this this word lysis. We've seen this word before. We've seen it in the lysosome. Uh, we've seen it in 
reactions that break things down. So I want you to associate this word with uh, breakdown. Okay. Now glyco, I want you to associate with sugar. So literally this word means sugar breakdown or the breakdown of sugar. Okay, so that gives you a little bit of a clue as to what the initial product or excuse me, the initial reactant is going to be. The initial reactant is glucose. It's a six carbon uh, sugar. You can actually count the gray circles here that are uh, going to represent the carbons for glucose. Now, glucose is going to be broken down, so we got to take some steps here that result in the breaking down of this six carbon sugar. And that's what these arrows represent. They represent you know parts of the of the chemical reaction which change this molecule in some way I obviously you don't need to know the details of that uh, what I want you to focus on however is that in this initial step of breaking down glucose this picture is showing us investing energy into that system it's showing us investing to ATP in that process so we're going to, from ATP to ADP so that's showing that we require energy into the system so there's an initial energy investment phase, right? So this initial energy investment phase actually um, puts us in the hole if you're thinking of it from a kind of a monetary or, uh, yeah, I guess a monetary perspective, right? We're in debt. We're in energetic debt at this point. Uh, so that's something that we'll need to, to fix later on if, if we're going to use this process to create energy, which obviously we are. Okay, so this... Initial phase uh, is the energy investment phase. We're going to go into the, the part now that's an energy harvest or an energy creation phase to get us back on the plus side. Okay. Uh, the details of this, again, are not really necessary for, for some of you that are, that are interested in, in some of the more, you know, some of the details of this. Uh, you can follow these phosphates and how they change uh, for each of these chemical reactions. I'm not particularly worried about that at this point um, you know I don't want you to know the chemicals but you know when a phosphate goes on that changes the molecule into something else when you phosphate leaves it changes to something else so you'll see that in a situation where you invest ATP there's a, a, a phosphate emerging uh, and you pick up another phosphate and then at the, at the very end you're gonna see a molecule that has zero phosphates right so uh, you invest phosphates at some point and then you collect phosphates at some point um, but that's not too, too important for this process. I do want you to focus on uh, some of the products that are made in this process. So in class, I introduced NAD+. It's an electron carrier. Okay. That just shifted things around a little bit. can deal with it. Okay, back to this page. Um, yeah, so it's an electron carrier. Uh, hopefully it, it looks familiar to you. You, you knew of its cousin, uh, NADP plus in, in photosynthesis. This is simply a different electron carrier with a different structure, and, and thus it's called NAD plus when it's empty. Now, when it takes those two electrons, see these little yellow circles? Those represent electrons. So when NAD plus takes electrons, it becomes NADH. There you go, plain and simple. Uh, it's taking electrons from these molecules as they're changing, guys. So I want you to, to realize that this food, glucose, that we've broken down, this macromolecule, um, we, we are going to, uh, to basically start harvesting electrons from it. And that's the big thing, uh, at least initially, is that we're, we're going to take some electrons uh, for, for collecting energy. Okay, So this happens in this process. We do this. Uh, once per um, half glucose, okay, so this molecule here is a half glucose and uh, leading to the creation of NADH. Same thing happens here with the other half. That's the other interesting thing for this, guys, is that when you break a glucose in half, you basically double the output, right? So all of this is occurring per glucose. Okay, so you, you create NAD uh, NADH down here as well arriving at these two molecules, okay? And then this is where we actually get a lot of the energy, okay? So we're going to convert these two ADP and these two ADP 
to two ATP and two ATP in this in these next series of chemical reactions. Okay, so now we've added four ATP, and when you take into consideration the the, the two that we owe, you basically net two ATP. Okay, uh, so keep that in mind when we go back and review. But that's all well and good. So we've created a little bit of NADH. We've created a little bit of ATP. That's great. Uh, ATP is going to go off to perform chemical reactions. NADH is going to go off to the electron transport chain in the third part. But really, guys, what I'm really most interested in is this pyruvic acid. Okay, The pyruvic acid is the most important part of glycolysis because this uh, product is going to go to um, it's going to go to the next step which is if you follow my little arrow up here doo -doo 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 -doo, Krebs cycle okay so this product here pyruvic acid is going to go on to be a reactant for the Krebs cycle um, or to produce a reactant for the Krebs cycle okay so moving on to the Krebs cycle you can follow me here see we just made we just made this pyruvic acid right here and now we're in the process of converting it into acetyl-CoA and then acetyl-CoA actually enters into the Krebs cycle. Okay, so again, this would be your reactant for this. And then as we're, as we're converting uh, these molecules into different molecules, you're going to create new products. So the first product, one of the first products you'll make um, is again this NADH molecule. So this NAD plus will take a few electrons and become NADH. The other interesting thing that you um, that you t that you that you make is uh, is carbon dioxide. So remember we said that cell respiration creates carbon dioxide, and this is one of the steps that generates this molecule. And the way you can see this, guys, is this pyruvic acid here is three carbons. So these little gray circles: one, two, three go on to become a two carbon uh, molecule called, called acetyl-CoA. Uh, it's, it's two carbons because you lose this carbon here as a carbon dioxide. So keep that in mind too. Um, you also need a little bit of water here as a reactant, but um, not as important as, as obviously as pyruvic acid. Okay, so now this acetyl-CoA is going to go into the process and become this six carbon molecule. The reason you get a two turning into a six is just like in the in the uh, just like in uh, photosynthesis uh, during the Calvin cycle, the, the the remaining portion of that cycle, so in this instance this four carbon structure is going to join with the two to make the six. So it's just like the Calvin cycle except there are different molecules involved, okay? So don't let those details get you distracted. Uh, again, this six carbon structure shown here is going to transform itself all the way back to a four structure, a four carbon structure. So that means that you lose two of these carbons at some point. Take a guess how you lose them. You lose them as carbon dioxide. Remember that big waste product that we exhale when we're creating energy. So you lose carbon as carbon dioxide. And then along the way, just as in um, glycolysis, you're going to make a little bit of ATP. You're going to make a little bit of NADH, actually a lot more. In this case, you make three, but I don't need you to know about the numbers so much. Uh, you make a lot, you, you make a, a, a considerable amount of NADH, and then you make this new electron carrier full of electrons, and it's called FADH2. Okay, so we, we'll go over that again. Uh, and we'll review it in a pen cast, but you're making, uh, you're collecting a lot of electrons shown here, and you're making a little bit of ATP. Okay, uh, these electron carriers go to the ETC, that third step. ATP goes off to uh, perform chemical reactions, and this carbon dioxide is a waste. We exhale it, get it out of our system. Okay, I just made it under the 15 minute mark, uh, so. Uh, we'll review this again if you felt like this is a little rushed, okay? Uh, talk to you soon.